Hey guys, it's Matthew here once again with the new definitive current build of the league uh, for the Total League, and that is Splitting Steel Champion. This here in the background is Uber Eater of Worlds, and um, it, yeah, as you can see, we can tank some serious shit. Those tentacles are no joke. Uh, essentially, the character is Splitting Steel with Savior and then Perseverance Scaling Champion. Now, if you've seen these before, uh, Perseverance Champions, you know, chances are they're going to be damn near close, if not always build of the league, because stacking armor and evasion, and then scaling all of your damage through that with Perseverance usually results in a pretty damn well-rounded character. Uh, with this one, though, I wanted to try some Steel Skill action, and I started out as Shattering Steel, but... At around level 90, I think, uh, I did try out Splitting Steel, and it overall just felt better. Like, just a better version of that skill. It was more ranged, if you wanted it to be, and uh, it cleared better, and it had better damage. Now, a lot of that is thanks to Return Projectiles. The way that Return Projectiles interacts with Splitting Steel is pretty insane. Um, and likewise, Nimis, but I'll talk about that in a sec. What happens with the returning projectiles is you launch out your single proj, it explodes a bunch, and then all of those come back to you and explode a bunch. So if you are standing on top of an enemy, all of your return projectiles basically overlap and shotgun uh, an enemy, and you get a lot of extra value out of your additional projectiles, so any additional proj you gain throughout um, tattoos, passive tree, whatever it is you do, become huge extra damage, and you want to scale a little bit of area, ideally, I think, anyway, it's what it kind of feels like, uh, so that you get better overlaps. And the return proj, unfortunately, gem, does have something like a 60% damage penalty, so if you actually use the nimis instead, uh, all that would happen is your original projectile that you use for splitting steel goes somewhere else, but all of them return back to you and then do all of their damage at a full rate because Nimi's doesn't have a penalty. So this build that you are going to see throughout this video is currently um, using return projectile support and no tattoo scaling. So if you went with return uh, without return projectiles and used Nimi's, um, you would have far more power. And if you used extra tattoos for more expensiveness, you would have far more power once again. This character is probably something like 10 to 15 divines, as most of mine are. If you scaled it up to something like 40 to 50 divines, uh, you are talking at probably three to four times the power level of this character. And that's pretty crazy to think of because this is already an absolutely insane character for my own standards and most likely going to be a tough to beat build of the league uh, because of the well-rounded nature of this much armor evasion perma fortify and the life gain on hit that the um, sustain provides from a ring and also vitality watcher's eye so we are extremely thick we can tank a lot of things we have really good damage and really good clear speed this is a savior character as well so as you can see i've got a couple little clones running around and um what I'm doing different with that is I'm not using dual wield. Typically, I'm always dual wielding with a savior, and so is everyone else. You usually run like a paradoxical in the offhand. I usually run something else just to, um, you know, keep it somewhat fresh. But usually, running a paradoxical. I feel like this character has enough um, flat fizz scaling and damage potential through just the savior alone that the savior itself has good damage and we don't really need a secondary weapon to try and scale even more damage so with this one i actually went a bit different and ran a shield that's got some mana reserve on it as well uh, so that i could help fit in more auras and basically just smash more auras into the character in the form of an extra haste so without the um shield and if i was going dual wield then i wouldn't have haste in this setup but with haste and the way that we're scaling our auras through champion um, it does make a character quite a bit faster in terms of run speed and then um, attack speed to make up for the dual wield bonus loss and it ended up being pretty worth it i thought like yep potentially you might get more damage out of dual wield but um it didn't seem too necessary. I didn't really like the passive tree around it. Uh, I instead wanted to just fit a bit more auras in and uh, be a bit more comfortable with the 
characters set up for like a little bit of extra life and reserve and suppress um so shield ends up being the play for me and save you by itself first time i've ever done it just by itself seems to be good enough with the amount of extra flat fears uh, it has so this here is a cortex with insane extra damage on it um which is fine and my damage is fine but you can absolutely get one shot by elemental damage uh, so I think I do end up getting one shot here for the most part barely ever dying and the only things that really kill you up your bullshit So cortex that has like a bajillion extra damage is ridiculous, of course, um, and you need like proper Elemental damage reduction scaling through like pathfinder or some shit to tank stuff like that uh, Did a good handful of maven runs there can be some bullshit from Maven, absolutely. Um, but as you can see, that the projectiles shoot out from us and we have to overlap on top of the boss. So you do want to like basically turn yourself into a melee a lot of the time, which isn't a problem when you have this type of damage. But you can also be ranged um, and still deal some okay damage. Um, but yeah, the life pool isn't huge. So the biggest detriment to this character is probably degen puddles. And that's um, a bit on Maven, so we do have some damage reduction in general, but the life ball isn't huge and the regen as such isn't huge. Uh, you've essentially built around being very tanky to hits, uh, so you don't need much life against hits and can tank Cirrus beams, so did an uber Cirrus run and limit tested just pure Cirrus die beams and everything, and they are quite tankable. And that does make Cirrus overall a much nicer fight. So almost none of my characters usually are capable of tanking um, die beams, but this one definitely can, especially with a molten shell up, and that means that you can recover through certain phases quite uh, comfortably. But it's still a bullshit fight, and the biggest detriment is of course the degen puddle. I think I end up dying on this one to a degen puddle, um, because that thing just shreds you when you've got no life, um, no huge life total, and you can't like recover when you're on top of it. So, I do die to that, but still pretty comfortable for almost all the Ubers out there, and um, does easily do a clean sweep of all the um, content. It's just, you're still gonna sometimes die to some of the small bullshit out there. So, there's the degen part, I didn't even fucking see it, I think it was under some rocks. Uh, and then also did Simulacrum, 30 waves, deathless. It's an absolute lag fest, it's a mess. So the one thing I haven't talked about in the skill is the bitrate nightmare. Um, it's probably a terrible video overall because you can't see shit. Uh, and that's just how it is um, with this skill. It's like it throws out a lot of particles and then they explode and then come back to you and shit out more particles. Uh, and on this particular content stuff gets pretty thick and you may actually notice that call of steel comes in really clutch so to actually um, enjoy and use this skill you do have to call of steel all the time so that you get extra proj but on really thick packs and expedition stuff like that um, call of steel actually can just like explode packs and enemies and does feel pretty damn powerful so 30 waves deathless had a few close calls but it's definitely a solid simulacrum build if you want it to be and just a solid all-round build for everything splitting steel with return proj i think is pretty flexible can be done multiple ways and uh, this is but one example and with that, let me go ahead and show you how I built the character. So here we are, level 95, last build left me blind, which I think was the Voltaxic Burst build. Uh, I was hoping for a nice clean uh, sort of skill this time around, and it was going well with Shattering Steel, but then this happened, and yeah, it's kind of a mess again. Uh, level 95 champion. So just to go over the skill real quick, as you can see, uh, you shoot out a single proj when you have Call of Steel with uh, extra shards going. You shoot out a proj and then it explodes a bunch of times and then comes back to you and explodes again. So that's because of return proj and that's what makes this so powerful. And um, like I said, if you don't use this and instead use Nimis, you don't have this 60% less penalty, um, which is huge because pretty much all of your damage is coming from these big return proj um, actions. And the more projectiles you have, the more of these little points are going to happen and then explosions around you. So currently I am using a savior. Uh, this one is one I got from cards that has uh, melee fortify and area. Pretty nice one. The melee fortify does nothing. The area should help us with a little bit of like explosiveness, I think. 
Um, and then otherwise we are scaling around perseverance for lots of armor and evasion. And um, as you can see, this is unbuffed when, well, unbuffed is in non-combat buffed. Uh, once we have other buffs, I should be at something like 70, 80k each armor and evasion, uh, which means Perseverance should be giving us 400 attack damage. So typically with this type of build, you don't really need to worry about increased damage scaling at all. You just get defenses, so armor, evasion, and then crit, if you're going crit, which usually you are, uh, various crit scalings, and then just try and fix accuracy, stuff like that. So percent damage, percent damage, swords, attack damage, that sort of stuff, usually pretty low tier since almost all of it's getting taken care of by Perseverance. Um, and then on top of that, Fortify, Champion gives you Fortify, and you just have a good extra bit of thickness, and at the same time, um, get Onslaught from the belt. So aside from that, the only real fancy tech that we have is uh, Fury Valve, which I only put on the last couple levels, and it's not a game changer in this one. It's just two additional proch, because it also does some random modifiers shit, but that doesn't matter in this case, um, because that does nothing for splitting steel. It just gives you an extra couple of proch to scale off of. So without that, I previously had a crit multi amulet with some accuracy and some fizz damage and stuff. Putting this on felt like it did a little bit more damage in the end. Um, so if you have less projectiles, this is going to feel like it does more. Currently, it just it feels a bit better than a normal amulet for me. But um, yeah, it's probably the best in slot. It's just it didn't feel like a game changer, so don't feel like you can't do splitting steel without this thing because you can. And I did up until very recently. Um, so yeah, it's got the two extra proj, and then I've also put charisma on there so that I can fit more auras in. Pretty much all of my gear is revolved around trying to fit more auras in. Uh, my helm is for shattering steel enchant, so if you could instead get like a splitting steel enchant, you'll be able to pop off harder with your steel shards. Or a res reservation enchant, so you can um, fit stuff in quite a lot easier. So I went with this. It's a wasted enchant at this point, because I already crafted the helm and then just kept it. Um, but yeah, and helm enchant could be pretty big in this build. Uh, I grabbed a armor evasion fracture and then just went to town with some dense fossils until good stuff happened and uh, that means we have a good thick chest that has armor evasion and then you scale either grace determination whatever hell you want pride even and then non curse aura effect because uh, all of our curses are going to be pretty boosted by this stuff and we are also running pride uh, which in this case should be just about doubled in effectiveness so it's pretty crazy a uh, bunch of suppress and stuff grabbed a fracture and just rolled um, ailment avoid on it with loathing essences and then ba basically made myself immune to um, almost all ailments so chill freeze shock and then we're just uh, a little bit vulnerable to some others because we got 70 percent but we are immune to the others thanks to that avoid shock and also the tattoos um yeah a couple of tattoos that finished off the other stuff um Grabbed a life gain and hit ring, implicit, and then rolled something with Chaos Res. I needed some int as well, uh, and then reused a previous ring for some resists and int. Um, I'm over the top on my int at the moment, but we did need a bunch of int so we can start using increased area and crit damage. Uh, and then also grabbed suppress gloves, and um, yeah, that's it. Nothing too special. Uh, the shield is what I fit in here. I think I bought this one off the market for like 50C or something. So it's going to be tough to roll something like this exactly. But the idea was that I could get some extra suppress on a shield and then that would save me a point or two on the tree because you could instead like grab some suppress or um, have lucky suppress. And instead of getting lucky suppress, I end up grabbing phasing. I grabbed that purely for simulacrum. So I didn't have that up until now. And it's only there for simulacrum so I could actually run through while constantly um, suppressing and phasing. Otherwise, chance to suppress lucky does help you cap, uh, theoretically. And I would have used that if I needed to. Uh, so the gear, yeah, pretty much taken care of. I'll just show you the passive tree. So the passive tree is similar to my previous ones, I think. Uh, so you do have a lot of extra aura scaling there. You got a lot of extra impale scaling and then armor and fortification. Uh, so we have two um, cluster jewels, mostly so I can fit in extra jewels and then get some armor and evasion scaling. So battle hardened is the main thing. Um, this one, armor evasion. And then we've also got a bunch of extra fizz and stuff. Likewise with this one. And I think I rolled these myself with... Maybe Jagged Fossils, 
can't remember exactly, but they weren't hard. I think it was Jagged Fossils. Because, yeah, getting three three props was pretty common on these um, Fizz Clusters. Uh, but then I also stole Overwhelm from Duelist, which is a bunch of crit and crit multi, uh, just to fix the crit on our weapon. But if you can't get those, using a crit gem is going to be just as good at the end of the day, pretty much. Because uh, my last support increased error. I'm not even sure it's that good. But I'm choosing to believe it helps overlap. Um, yeah. So that's what I'm going with in that case. But otherwise, a crit gem instead there is going to be very competitive. And then you don't have to do the Slayer jewels. Um, other than that, we've also got extra reservation in the form of one of these. So, Grace and then a bit of extra reserve, and then a Watcher's Eye that does life gain on hit, and Impales inflict two additional while using Pride. I bought this thing for one Divine, and then Divined it like eight times to get it to this roll, so it was pretty cost inefficient, and of course they're going to be a bit more expensive at the moment, um, but you can get more life gain on hit from an extra ring like this, or you could even actually spec one, two, three into 10% of Leech's instant, and that should be pretty similar of a feeling for... Um, big uh sustain while face tanking standing still etc i uh, then got a lethal not a lethal a brutal restraint over here for um curse non-curse or effect so a bit of or effect there and there um blind on hit or effect um that 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 so it's mostly the or effect I'm just trying to scale that uh which is decent but a lethal pride with like extra double damage might even be better i don't know uh, I just went, tried to maximize my aura effect in this case. And then um, an impossible escape that lets us go up here and get an additional proj, some crap flask stuff, um, mark things. And then I did use this additional pierce when I was using shattering steel, but I no longer need it because uh, I don't think this skill needs pierce um, beyond at least maybe just one. So one pierce so that the proj that you have is like piercing, but then the rest I think shouldn't really matter either way. Who knows? Um, so the links here are shattering, uh, splitting steel, sorry, brutality, vicious proj, return proj, increased area, and crit damage. Uh, we have over here life tap, sniper's mark, mark on hit, um, faster attacks. My quality one is on the other character uh, with protector, maim, shield charge, and you can use shield charge or leap slam. I leap slam for almost the entirety of this character, then I put on shield charge, and with our like movement speed, attack speed, it's pretty fucking fast, so it feels kind of nice. Uh, we then have pride, determination, and haste in the shield. Uh, we have arrogance, precision, dread banner, vitality, so precision is on my life, um, and then vitality just for the watcher's eye, and then down here is frost blank, molten shell, Grace and Blood Rage. So Blood Rage is what helps us um, sustain frenzies throughout pack clearing, but otherwise we do have Blood Rage and um, Frenzy sustain happening over here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the character. This doesn't even have to be a savior build as far as I can tell. You could easily just do this as a Paradoxica, or you could dual wield with Savior Paradoxica. Um, the extra clones just feel kind of extra, you know, spam on the screen but if you just did something with way bigger damage like a paradoxica um maybe you just clear things harder with less proj and it'd be less messier who knows uh but i think you can do very many versions of splitting steel with like ellie damage heat shiver damage whatever um because it's just mechanically very strong with the current um form of return proj like i said if you use a nimis instead you don't have to use this so you save yourself a support so you can get a different support and your proj won't deal 61 percent less damage so it will be pretty crazy um i've tried to keep it fairly realistic and i don't go super out of my way with um op builds and stuff but this one is one that can go pretty damn high if you invest heavier into it with more projectiles as well using tattoos it can get pretty crazy so this is this version of the build hope you guys enjoyed it thank you very much for watching see you guys next time